If you want to become wealthy, you have to become broke first. The first time I felt rich was the first time I had a big bank account. I was working on a bunch of different side hustles. I was working at weddings. I was working on my own business. I was doing everything that I could to make as much money as possible. And I remember I saw $50,000 in my bank account. And then I saw 75 grand in my bank account. And then I saw 100 grand in my bank account. I wasn't spending money and I was doing whatever I could to earn money. And I kept doing this and doing this and doing this. And then I saw my bank account hit $150,000. Now I felt rich. I had never seen six figures in my bank account before. I had this cash in my bank. This wasn't how much money I was earning a year. This was the amount of money that I had access to in my own bank account. And then I watched my bank account go back down to zero. I went broke, but I didn't go broke the way that the majority of people go broke. I didn't go out and buy a fancy car. I wasn't buying fancy clothes and going on fancy vacations. I went broke with the intention of trying to become wealthy. I took all of that money and I bought a rental property and spent some money on renovations. And now my bank account had essentially gone all the way down to zero. Imagine seeing six figures in your bank account for the first time ever. And now all you got is a pair of keys. Here's the problem that I saw. I had a big bank account, which was nice, but that big bank account wasn't growing. It would only grow if I worked to add more money to this bank account. That was the only way that it would grow. But at the same time, what if I wanted to buy something? If I went out and bought a vacation, if I wanted to buy a car, if I wanted to buy clothes, I want to go to a nice restaurant, this money would be depleting unless I'm actively working to grow this money. But this money in my bank account wasn't doing anything to grow, but it was leaving every single day. It was leaving every time I spent money. But now when I took this money and I went and I bought this investment property, now all of a sudden, I had an asset that was paying me with more money because now this rental property was paying me every single month. Yeah, it cost me all the money that I had, but now it was giving me cash flow month after month after month. Yeah, I lost the ability to take this $150,000 and go out and buy a car. I lost the ability to take this $150,000 and blow it somewhere. But instead, I took that money and I wanted to invest it in myself. And this is where now you go back to feeling broke because when you have $150,000 in your bank account, that's a lot of money. But when you own this asset, well, maybe this is paying you $1,500 a month. It's a lot harder to live off of $1,500 a month than it is to live off of $150,000 until this $150,000 goes away because this $150,000 has a time span. As soon as you spend this hundred and fifty dollars that money is gone. You're never getting it back. Once you spend this money on vacations, cars, and fancy stuff, you are never getting that money back. But when I spend this $1,500 this month, I'm getting another $1,500 next month, and the month after that, and the month after that, and the month after that. And on top of that, I also still own the asset, which hopefully is going up in value. If you really want to become wealthy, you have to start by becoming broke because that's going to require you to save up this money and feel like you're rich. But then you got to take this cash and put it into something that's going to continue to pay you even after you stop working. And that means you're going to have to make sacrifices because you go from having all this money to now having nothing. Because as soon as you buy an investment, now you don't have the money for a nice car. You don't have the money for a nice vacation. You don't have the money for the nice things that you originally had the money for, but you have the asset. Now the goal is for your asset to start paying you. It's not going to pay you a ton of money, but it'll start paying you something. And as soon as it starts paying you something, that's when you want to get another asset and then another asset. That way you can stack the cash flow from your assets. You want to stack the assets, not just stack the cash because stacking the cash makes you feel rich, but that rich has a time span. This wealth that you have from your assets, doesn't have a time span because your assets will continue to pay you even after you stop working. And if you have good assets, they'll continue to pay you even after you die. Now, you don't have to go out and buy a rental property. You don't have to invest your money in real estate. You don't have to put your money in the stock market. You don't have to put your money in cryptocurrency. You don't have to put your money in a startup, but you have to invest your money into something with the purpose of trying to grow your investment. I like investing for cash flow. That's why the majority of my investment portfolio are cash flow producing assets. 
but I also have some investments that don't pay me with cash flow. I have some startup investments that I invest in. They don't pay me any cash flow. Maybe they'll go up in value if somebody buys these startups. Maybe they'll go to nothing. I have some cryptocurrency investments. They don't pay me any cash flow. I have some stock investments that don't pay me cash flow. But the bulk of my investment portfolio are cash flow producing assets. Whether it's real estate or dividend paying stocks, the majority of my investments are cash flow producing because these cash flow producing assets continue to pay me even if I don't sell the asset and even if I don't go to work. How and when do you invest your money? Well, this is where it pays to stay up to date on what's happening in the financial markets. And if you want an easy way to do that, you can just join Market Briefs. It's my free financial newsletter where every day my team is breaking down what's happening in things like the housing market, the stock market, the crypto market, the global economy, and our own economy into a fun, witty, and easy to read email. You can read the email in less than five minutes every morning. And the best part is even if you don't have a financial background, not only are you gonna understand what's happening, but you're going to love reading Market Briefs every morning. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I'll pull the link to how you can join Market Briefs for free down in the description below. The where should you invest is going to depend on how interested and involved you want to be with your investments. If you don't want to be involved with your investments, if you want to be a completely passive investor and not have to think about your investments, well, you could passively invest your money into the stock market. I wouldn't say invest it into individual companies, but you could look at the ETFs or index funds or maybe even mutual funds where you can put your money every time you get paid and not have to worry about it. That way you can get exposure to the stock market. If you say, but I also want some exposure to real estate, but I don't want to do all the work with real estate investing. Well, you can passively invest your money into passive real estate funds. You can be a passive investor into somebody else's real estate deal. There are so many of these happening all the time. There are real estate investor conferences in every state. Look for them in your area. They're called REI meetups, REI conferences, real estate investor meetings. Look for these conferences and every conference is going to have somebody who is looking for money in order to build or buy some real estate deal. You can give the money, not have to worry about it. And now the developer, the investor, the professional will be working to take your money and buy a bigger property. Are you guaranteed to make money? No, of course not. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest. You might even lose money, which is why you should always do your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. But this is where you got to do your own due diligence, understand the person, understand the real estate deal. And if it's a good deal and you like it, well, now you can invest your money passively and not have to worry about managing the deal. The reason why this concept is so hard is because we think in terms of spending. When we work to save up $10,000 or $50,000 or $100,000, we think, what can I buy? with this money that I saved up. I worked so hard to make this money, I want to enjoy it. And so we think in terms of spending, what car can I buy, what vacation can I go on, what house can I buy, what nice things can I buy for myself right now? We're thinking in terms of tomorrow. But what every wealthy person is doing is not thinking in terms of tomorrow, they're thinking in terms of the next decade. And when you think in terms of the next decade, you're gonna spend your money very differently because wealthy people are thinking, what can I spend this money on that's gonna pay me with more money tomorrow? What everybody else is thinking about is how can I spend this money to make me look rich today? And you have to make that decision. Would you rather look rich today? Or would you rather be rich tomorrow? The problem is if you wanna actually be rich tomorrow, you're gonna to actually be broke today because that means you gotta take your money and instead of spending it on things that make you look rich, you gotta spend it on things that actually make you rich, but they keep you broke today. The real definition of financial freedom is when you can live off of your assets. When your assets, your investments are paying you with enough cash flow to fund your lifestyle, now you're free because your assets are gonna to continue to pay you even when you stop working. And if you can live off of your assets where your cash flow is paying for your expenses, now you're wealthy because you have that infinite level of freedom. Because if your income is $5,000 a month from your investments and your expenses are $4,000 a month, your assets are gonna to continue to pay you forever. And your expenses, as long as you keep them below your income from your assets, you're free to do whatever you want because you have the freedom from your assets. This is why true wealth is measured in time not dollars. Because if you have a hundred grand in your bank account, you might feel rich. But if your expenses are $5,000 a month, you're only rich for 20 months. After 20 months, your bank account's gonna be zero and you have normal money to live your life. But if you have that $5,000 a month coming in from your investments and your expenses are 4,500 or $5,000 a month, you're rich forever 
because now your assets will continue to pay you again and again and again and again and again, way past the 20 months you would have had if you just kept the cash in your bank account. There's really no secret sauce on how you do it. I call it the decade of sacrifice where you got to go through a solid decade where you're going to have to really live below your means. You're going to work to earn more money with the purpose of now buying as many assets as possible. And if you can do this month after month after month, year after year after year for a decade, you are going to see a significant increase in the amount of wealth that you have. And that wealth that you build in this decade of sacrifice will be able to pay you dividends for the rest of your life. When it comes to the spending money, you want to make sure you spend your money on needs before, before you spend your money on wants. Now, what you need to do is you really need to understand the difference between a need and a want, because that might seem obvious, but uh, people's financial decisions speak very differently.